Welcome to That's Good Sports, I am Brandon. There's an air of optimism in the air here in the Denver air, Perna. It's a short week for the Chiefs and Broncos, which looks like it's working to the Broncos' favor as Kansas City is riddled with injuries at key positions. And I do want to start this episode with a moment of silence to honor Brock Osweiler, who was so memorable to the NFL that ESPN couldn't even use a picture of the correct quarterback when they announced his retirement via the ESPN News app. It is fitting Osweiler retired during the month of Brocktober. And if you were better, we could have had wordplay battles like a Brockwork Orange versus Mobile Mahomes, Big Johnson Brockwurst versus Mahome Economics, Brock a by baby versus Mahome Mortgage, which Chiefs and Broncos fans would have remembered for years. Instead, we get Patrick Mahomes versus Joe Cool Tobacco Flacco. Flacco is smooth with the deep ball. He'll take your breath away and get you feeling really good before eventually killing you, just like tobacco. Today, though, I'll give you a few reasons each team can win on Thursday night. Let's get sports. Please, if you're new here, subscribe to this YouTube channel for more football coverage. I do have Big Dick Patreon shoutouts for Christian, Kinski, Jameis, give me a better name and I'll say the rest, Agent K, Ross, Warren, Elvis, GTG Ryan, and the Washington Foreskins. Patreon.com slash that's good sports. That's how you can support this channel if you Let's be honest, you gotta be a little crazy to support this channel. Now after the first month of football, nobody would have guessed the Broncos would be heading into this matchup on a two game win streak, nor could it have been prophesized that the Chiefs would be trying to break a two game losing streak. These football circumstances have surprised even the greatest football predictor in history, Tony Romo, but his powers have dropped ever since he stopped wearing a locket filled with cocaine in the ashes of Nostradamus. And since he stopped being invited to the secret orgies held by Sylvia Brown and John Edward. But that's a story for a different day. For the first time this season, the Broncos fans feel better about their team than Chiefs fans. This does not take away from the fact that the Chiefs have beaten the Broncos in seven straight games, or that the Chiefs are three and a half point favorites on the road. Honestly, I don't like that Kansas City is backed into a corner right now. I have two cats. I know how that shit ends. I do like that if the Broncos win on Thursday, it changes everything. A season that was more dead than the Chiefs pass rush suddenly could be alive with life. The Broncos just may be the goddamn Frankensteins of the NFL with the Thursday night football win. So what are the key fobs for victory for each team? First key for Broncos, hope they get Gimp Mahomes. Mahomes tweaked his ankle in week one against the Jags, then re-aggravated it in their loss to Indy, which of course is the only reason they lost and not just because the Colts are a more well-rounded team who can also play defense. Mahomes has definitely been a little off, and just like Ben Roethlisberger, Tom Brady, or Aaron Rodgers, it's only because they're injured. I'm not sure the injury uh, affects his arm strength, though, because he doesn't really use his legs when he throws anyways, but it limits his ability to buy time and scramble out of the pocket, which, as Broncos fans have been reminded roughly 27 million times in the last year, is what allowed him to scramble and throw the ball with his left hand. Now that's something not even Steve Young or Michael Vick ever did. Truly special. Stop it, you can't do this. You can't escape, you can't make these plays, you can't make these throws. Patrick Mahomes, just stop it. We haven't seen this. I mean, we've seen Brett Favre, we've seen Aaron Rodgers, we've seen John Elway. I don't know what sort of flexibility drills he does or was born with or whatever the case. That's unbelievable. Another key is the revitalized Broncos defense. Is it real though? 
Since making a couple changes prior to the Chargers game, the Broncos defense has been nothing short of incredible, giving up just six points in the last two games. As we know, the Broncos moved Shelby Harris to three technique, whatever the fuck that means, and started Mike Purcell at nose tackle. And in the biggest power move, started the osteoporosis bus driver himself, Alexander Johnson at middle linebacker who is now the highest graded Bronco defender on Pro Football Focus just ahead of Kareem Jackson and Justin Simmons. The Broncos defense could be a little more sound if Bryce Callahan is ever to come back, but the jump is remarkable. They've played two bad offensive lines the last two weeks and three bad quarterbacks and have taken full advantage. Not really fair to Ryan Tannehill, but seven sacks and five picks in two games is pretty good. The good news, this week they're going up against an offensive line that is currently and uncharacteristically struggling whilst dealing with significant injuries. The Chiefs also aren't rushing the football effectively. They lead the league in passing yards per game on offense, are fifth in points per game with 28.7, which is more than the Broncos have scored in a single game all year, but are 24th in rush yards per game. But even though Kansas City can't really run the ball, we're going to find out this week if Denver's defense is one that's feasted on lesser opponents like the Cowboys in their first three games or one that can stand up to elite offenses as well. Even if Kansas City isn't firing on all cylinders right now, they can still torch you with any one of their 50 wide receivers who run a 4-3-40. Broncos have to take advantage of the short week. There's no underselling how big an advantage is to be able to play at home on a week where you only have three days to prepare for the opponent. This year, home teams on Thursday night football are four and one, if we're excluding the first game of the season. If home field advantage is worth three points on a regular week, it's probably worth four and a half on a short one. Plus, there's the altitude to factor in. Sure, it means that Pat Mahomes can throw the ball 85 yards instead of 80, but it also means that Andy Reid will be so out of breath that he takes longer to call plays, leading to several delay of game penalties like the one they should have been flagged for last year. It said zero. The Chiefs injuries are significant, a real issue for a Thursday game. Chris Jones not playing on the defensive line is a big break for the Broncos offensive line. Corner Kendall Fuller is out, and if corner Bashad Breland, who didn't travel with the team for family reasons, doesn't play, that leaves the Chiefs with one starting corner, three total. To which I say, welcome to the club, Kansas City. Denver is playing this game all fucking year long. Now, I'm about to reveal how the Chiefs can beat the Broncos, so Andy Reid, if you're still watching, please stop. The Kansas City defense has not been good, but if they pressure Joe Flacco, they have a great chance at winning. The good news for Denver is that right tackle Jawan James is expected to play for the first time since week one. And without Jones, the Chiefs may have to dial up some creative blitzes to get pressure in the interior. That's where Jones is usually the catalyst for guys like Frank Clark and Emmanuel Ogba on the edges. If there's pressure, Flacco is 48% more likely to make a mistake according to a stat I just made up, but I think Broncos fans will agree with that stat. As Garrett Bowles' penalties have dropped, Flacco mistakes have increased. It's the biggest paradox of our time here in Denver. Flacco mainly just needs to avoid corner Charvarius Ward, who is playing well in that secondary. Which leads me to the Broncos' corner depth concerns. Another way KC can take advantage. The Broncos' defense has been playing as well as it has in years. Years. But they're doing that without a lot of depth at corner. The most important player, Chris Harris, is healthy and playing very well. But after him, you've got Devonta Harris and Isaac Yadam, who are at best unproven and inexperienced. Duke Dawson will be able to play on Thursday, but I have no clue who is better between him and Devonta Harris. The Chiefs are not the team you want to be down corners against. So Denver will likely rely on Kareem Jackson and Will Parks to fill in depending on the defensive package, but you can expect the Chiefs to spread out a lot of wide receivers to try and take advantage of that lack of depth. I actually feel good now about the Broncos safeties and linebackers in coverage, which gives me confidence. They can take care of Travis Kelsey, which is kill, who, is, who has killed them in the past. Even with wide receiver Sammy Watkins out, which he was the leading receiver last October with two touchdowns and 107 yards, we will still have to worry about Tyreek Hill, Demarcus Robinson, McCole Hardman, and the guy flying under the radar, Byron Pringle. 
Yes, a guy with the last name Pringle was hand-selected by Andy Reid. Now, when Reed says, more Pringles, nobody knows if it's a game plan he's working on or if it's lunchtime. Usually both. Thanks to Marcus Mariota, the Broncos have more sacks on the season than the Chiefs. Now, sure, Von Miller's sack numbers are low for Von Miller, but he has 28 total pressures, tied for 11th best with guess who? Khalil Mack. And Miller is doing it despite getting double and triple teamed. My advice to Von Miller, though, is watch out for that shady, shady McCoy coming across the backside of the line and chipping your face off like he did last week to J.J. Watt. If the Chiefs win, it will be their receivers taking advantage of the Broncos' unproven depth at corner. If Denver wins, I think it will be because they run the ball down Kansas City's throat, currently giving up the third most rush yards per game and third most rushing touchdowns. Uh, that's what the Colts and Texans did keeping Mahomes on the sideline. The X factor will be Malik Reed on the left side of the Chiefs line, which is missing left tackle Eric Fisher and left guard Andrew Wiley. Not allowing Mahomes the time to figure out if Duke Dawson and Devonta Harris can cover for 10 seconds. So I will continue to pick the Broncos to win, and I think this game will look a lot like the Broncos Jaguars game, but with a 26-24 Broncos victory and one bad call that really, really screws the Chiefs. Time to pay the Piper refs for the Broncos. Hey. What? I just want to take another look at you. Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Please subscribe here on Twitter. I mean, what the? F We're on YouTube, but I'm on Twitter at Brandon Perna. Make sure you follow at WillKey6. He helps me write football videos for this YouTube channel. And oh man, this is a big game for the Broncos. Could be season altering, folks. Oh.